Hi. Hi, Ms. Debbie. How are you, Neva? I'm going to transfer the um, host credentials over to you now. Perfect. Okay, well, hallelujah. Hello. <laughs> Neva. Hi, you know, I feel like oh, good we, evening, Supervisor. We drove across town. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. Quickly. Whoosh. Our we got a lot of people members, hopping on here. <laughs> are, are all the council members present? Oh, I've been waiting for you. I we know. Have Jill, we have Tom. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Hello everyone. Tom. Tom, see, I know I there. heard Sam. <laughs> I'm I'm not seeing Lindsay yet. Hey, <laughs> I got, I'm happy I got, you're with us. I, I, so am I every day. It's it's a you know it's a great thing. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Let's Hi, see. Denise. Hi, Denise. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Good evening, all. I'm here. Hi, Can you hear me? We hear yeah. you. Hi, okay. Nick. Oh, how are you? We're so just we're fine. Waiting. <laughs> we're waiting. We're waiting for Lindsay. Yes. Uh. I hope. Thank you. I hope. Oh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> How's Steve? Oh, and then the funny part is um, <laughs> a Howie Rabakoff. His sister's name is Hope. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Crazy, right? Good evening, Lots of hope. Yeah, last week we had three uh <laughs> three hopes. Three hopes. <laughs> like a like a turkey club sandwich. <laughs> and they said there's no hope these days. Uh, yeah. Hi, Lindsay. Hello, Hello. how is everyone? Oh, oh we're having such yeah. a good time in this Where's pandemic. Your... <laughs> I hear a voice. We've been waiting here for you, Lindsay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 in a good way. In a good okay. way. Sorry, I said that because I apologize to, to the public. Is, is the public on yet? No. Oh, but, we're on. <laughs> but Gary, I, um, I need to walk you through um, transferring host credentials to NAVA because apparently I hit the wrong. Gary is first now. Yes. yes Gary oh, is do we have a little latte there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I looked at the agenda and I went out okay. and got happy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hold it. Wait. What happened? What happens if I leave the meeting? Oh. Uh, well, then you have a choice of either bringing the meeting to a close. Or oh, I like that one. Yes, that's a good one. <laughs> or you let us continue to meet and you just leave. You you'll you'll be given a choice. Even what? though I'm post, tell me what to do. Okay, so hover over the participants icon, please. Click on that and a box will appear on your screen with all of the participants listed. Yep, I got it. Okay, so go hover over Nava's icon. I'm looking for Nava, the she's all the way at the bottom. Where's Nava? I got it, Nava. Okay, go to the right about where the camera is, and you should see um, a box that says more. No, I only, do I have to hit the, I only see a microphone and a camera. Yeah, he only sees the participants. I see a more, I see a more on the top right. Let me see. Okay, good. Click on more. Yeah. And make neighbor the host. No, my box. Host? My, my. My box doesn't say that. Next to Neva's name, to the to hover over oh, there. Wait, wait, wait. Huh. I got it. I got it. Make host. Doing it. Nice, nice work. Yeah. <laughs> First time ever. <laughs> Why does he get to leave? Hi, Neva. <laughs> I'm so confused why he gets to leave. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to start? Oh. Yeah. Oh. 
I'm preparing the Facebook uh, live stream now. <laughs> okay, we are ready, Supervisor. Thank you, Neva. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Rye Town Council meeting of November November seventeenth, twenty twenty. Um, Debbie has the flag behind her, so everybody, uh, let us join Debbie in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic, Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation, under God, under God, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank that was you. better than last week. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to I say was that, that the, the one at the Rye Town Park meeting was better than last time also. We're getting very good at this communal pledging thing on Zoom. <laughs> uh, please call the roll, Hope. Okay. Councilperson Jill Axelrod. Councilperson Lindsay Jackson. Here. Councilperson Pamela Jaffe. Present. Council person Thomas Nardi. Present. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman. Present. Thank you, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize to the public for the late start of the meeting. It is 7.50. We had a very long Rye Town Park Commission meeting due to a uh, presentation that ran over and uh, that delayed the start of this meeting. So I just wanted to uh, Apologize to everybody for that. Thank and, you. Uh, and um, we can we can start. So let us have the uh, first item is approval of the minutes for October twentieth, twenty twenty. If there are no objections or changes, may I have a motion and a second? I'll make a motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Uh, we are. We have a continuation of the public hearing for local law number 20 regarding income and expense statements. Uh, and number two, not 20, number oh, two. I saw, oh, I was, I, was, <laughs> I was reading the year 2020. Number, <laughs> two, number two of 2020. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm going to make a statement about that. Uh, there have been many, many comments of the public, all of which were reviewed. Camille Miola uh, actually put a chart together regarding all of the comments and all of the categories they, they fell into. Uh, I had a meeting two weeks ago with the assessor, our tax cert attorneys, and our um, consultant, um, uh, and uh, came the to the consultant Tyler. I'm sorry, is the consultant Tyler Technologies? No. Okay. Uh, Edie, I forgot what's Edie's last name? McCarthy. 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 Okay. McCarthy. Edie, I know her so well. Uh, and and I, that's that's it's a, been a long day. <laughs> yes, Edie McCarthy. Thank and, you. Um, came to the conclusion that um, even though the provision of the income and expense statement would be of great benefit to the assessor and, and in producing uh, fair and equitable values, uh, we looked into it and found that of all the objections uh, to the law, uh, one had very serious merit. I don't want to downplay the others, but um, most of them could be overcome. And the time frame in which such a, an income and expense statement would be provided for uh, the taxable status date in May 
uh, was was not sufficient to to give proper uh, due diligence. And having an income and expense statement based on the previous year, which would occur because many, many commercial property owners file their, their taxes in October uh, on extension, which would reflect the previous year, that would not give us up-to-date current data. So what I'm going to do, and I've already prized the council of this, uh, I'm going to uh, close the public hearing without further comment. Uh, we will not be taking a vote. We're gonna put this on the back burner for now. And the assessor will be sending out letters at the end of the year, voluntarily requesting income and expense statements uh, for those who wish to provide them. And they can be, will be able to be done online on forms that the, uh, the assessor uh, has been working with our software provider to, uh, to come up with that can be readily put into a spreadsheet and analyzed. Um, mm -hmm. And we may revisit this uh, going forward, but for now um, we are tabling it and uh, closing the public hearing. So, um, can we at least say thank you to you and at least be able uh, to acknowledge that? Can we at least say thank you for tabling it for that? And do we have an opportunity? Sure. To yeah, I haven't closed the public hearing yet. So Good. If anybody, okay. If anybody wants to say anything, uh, please say it now. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if there's anybody else that's online on video or on audio. Uh, my name is Hope Klein, and I just want to say thank you for taking time both in the pandemic and with this uh, um, problem that we're having both uh, with the virus and with just understanding what's going on with the year 2020 in general. And so thank you for tabling it so that we're able to really access both English, Spanish, Polish, all, all ethnicities of uh, commercial property owners. And we really do appreciate that you've brought this to the table to obviously make it more even for everyone who's involved, but then also just taking the time to understand that this is not the best time for us to be able to present ourselves in our best way to you. So thank you, for, thank you, Gary, for, for tabling it for now. And hopefully we can revisit this in a better time in 2021. And thank you right. for that opportunity. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, Gary. All right, anybody else? Uh, if um, I may speak, I'll be brief. Uh, good evening, my name is Howie Ravikoff. My family owns property in Porchester for 55 years, give or take. Uh, thank you all for your participation in this board. That can't ever be said enough from my perspective. Uh, I greatly appreciate that you're all listening to the feedback uh, of your community. Uh, and I, I appreciate the decision that's being made today. And I'd like to offer myself uh, in any way possible moving forward, if that's in, uh, in offering some feedback on the form that may be available uh, experience I've had with other forms in the past, if that's how, uh, if, if I can participate in conversations on how this proposed law may come back before this board in the future, I would be more than happy to participate. Uh, but other than that, I echo Hope's uh, thoughts and appreciations and appreciation. Uh, thank you all once again. Thank you, Howie. Appreciate it. And I'm sure that uh, the assessor heard that and and would welcome your input into formulating the form. All right. Thank you. you. Thank you, Howie. Okay. Thank you. May I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All right. None opposed. Thank you all. And thank you, everybody who participated. I saw that there were a lot of names uh, on the list again. Um, and I appreciate all of the comments. Uh, that you made and the board that certainly appreciates it and and took it obviously took it all into account thank uh, you once once again 
the object mm -hmm. is to make the process better, not not to harm any property owner. And we're going to look forward to do that and keep working towards that end. Um, our next public hearing is on the preliminary budget, which we're all excited to have. Uh, and this, this hearing will not end tonight. We will continue it uh, wow. the next month. Uh, so may I have a motion to open the public hearing on the, pub, on the uh, 2021 preliminary budget? So moved. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The public hearing is open. Uh, do we have anyone who wishes to speak to the budget at this present time? Or David, do you want to do you want to say anything about the budget? It's a public hearing for the public. Uh, do you wish to say anything about it? I uh, would just to say that that uh, this is the preliminary budget, which uh, has some minor changes from the tentative budget. So it's a preliminary budget of record. This budget can be changed. Uh, it will be uh, issued to the board with any additional changes at the December fifteenth uh, board meeting to be um, adopted. So again, uh, if the board has any changes um, to the preliminary budget of record, uh, you know, if they can email uh, Debbie, myself, um, with, with any changes or, or things that uh, they feel need to be changed, uh, we, we can make those changes prior to um, the December 15th board meeting and uh, update the, the, the budget of record. Yeah, um, Davey, one of the things that we're going to be continually looking at is the cost of the Rytown Court expansion as a result of the Porchester Village Court dissolution. I'm not sure that all those figures in there are final, but um, you know, they're, they're, they're getting close. I, I don't anticipate any great changes other than possibly in those lines. Um, as we as we continue to analyze, and in fact, um, we have a matter on to uh, to retain the services of a consultant later down on the uh, on the agenda tonight. So, with that, um, are there any comments from the public at this time? And if not, we will just continue this to next month. Hearing okay. that, do we have anything? Uh, Neva, do you see anything? Is there anybody on? on uh, if not, we will we will continue the public hearing to next month. And I don't, I don't see any comments here on the on the feed. And we will we'll close the public hearing in uh, in November. Pardon me, in December, and uh, and vote on the budget. Um, so moving on to. Uh, our next public hearing, uh, public law, local law number three of 2020 to override the 2% tax cap for the budget. May I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Dave, tell us what this is about, please. Um, as part of the, the state controller, uh, you know, record from a number of years, they, they uh, adopted a 2% tax cap on the tax levies. And for the, for the town of Rye, the, the, you know, with the 2020 levy of about 775,000, uh, the 2% tax cap would be roughly between 18 or 20,000. Um, there's, there's also the merging of, of the court, which is, would be added to that tax cap increase. But uh, in 2021, uh, there's some revenue reductions uh, due to COVID uh, from the state for Crawford Park. There's also some uh, incremental debt service payments. So uh, the bottom line is, is that we, we need to exceed the tax cap by, by more than the 2% by, for a number, number of reasons in 2021. So this, this gives the, uh, the board has to approve a local law when it ever does. The last time we did this was in 2019 budget. 
All right. Thank you, Dave. Um, I have a, uh, do we have any questions from the uh, council people? Any comments from the public? If not, um, I have a motion to close the public hearing on uh, local law number three. So oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, Joel and Lindsay. <laughs> oh, so Lindsay can make the motion. I'll second it. Whatever's best. <laughs> okay. I, I don't want to be a motion point. hog. Uh, I never make my motion. <laughs> the motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Thank you. And now we have a resolution. Searchers. No, 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 no. That that am I get am I confusing myself? Was that that was to open and close the public hearing. Now we have a to have a Oh, okay. Oh, right yeah. oh yes, that's right. We have to. <laughs> we, have, we have law number three. Uh, may, uh, a motion and a second to approve local law number three to override the tax cap. I'll make the motion. Will I hear anybody? <laughs> I'll make the motion. I'll be great. I'll second. Thank you. Okay. Per Please call the roll. Sure. Councilperson Jill Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Lindsay Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Pamela Jaffe? Yes. Councilperson Thomas Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman? Yes, thank you. Um, now we have several resolutions regarding um, tax cert cases, settlements, uh, or just one. Okay, just talk to two um, parcels on the um, one resolution. Parcels owned by the same owner. Okay, I see. I see because I see 229 Union and I see Tompkins and Dubois. So these are, this is one resolution dealing with two separate properties owned by the same owner. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And the two properties are like adjacent to each other, basically on the same corner. All right. And, and Jeff, uh, the school district and the village of Mamaronek are aware of these and have no objection? They are and don't. Thank you. Then may I have a motion and a second uh, to approve the tax search settlement on oh. these properties? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. None opposed. Um, the next one, Debbie, uh, why don't you talk about this resolution to approve uh, the services of uh, Patty Dwyer? Yes, uh, this is a, um, a, a highly contained consulting arrangement with Patty Dwyer, uh, who is a, uh, a veteran uh, municipal manager, having been a manager and administrator with over 30 years of experience. Um, she, her team includes uh, two highly experienced court clerks, um, both of whom who have worked on um, expansions of courts and um, moving of courts. Uh, and the, um, I can give you more information about them if you'd like. Um, Essentially, the, the, the work that they will be doing is uh, to form a task force with me and with Ann Capisi, our town clerk. Um, and as a group, we are going to focus in on the brass tacks of what do we need to put in place in order to expand our court so that we can handle triple the amount of caseload and what are the administrative requirements. So this is um, organizational charts and staffing and IT and hours and admin and, uh, and figuring out you know, whether or not the budget that we've put together actually makes sense from a practical standpoint. So that's, that's the work. Um, it is uh, an extraordinarily reasonable price 
of $2,500 for Patty and a donation to the uh, local clerks association of $2,500. Right. What more I can I answer? I, I, I have to correct you on one thing. You said triple the caseload. I think it's six times the caseload. <laughs> so, um, uh, and I think this is um, I think this is well worth the expense. And um, this was already discussed with the judges uh, at one of the meetings that, that we've had had with them. Just so, you know, the public understands that uh, this, we've had ongoing discussions with our judges um, about the court expansion and uh, they are in favor of uh, bringing a consultant to, uh, to help us with this um, transfer. So with that, may I have a motion and a second, please? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, call the roll, please, Hope. Councilperson Axelrod. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Councilperson Jackson. Yes. Councilperson Jaffe. Yes. Councilperson Nardi. Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman. Yes. Thank you. Um, next resolution is renewing the maintenance and cloud contract for the uh, town's uh, charging stations at Crawford Park. Um, I will explain this and Camille Miola can fill in the blanks when I miss something. Uh, we uh, have two electric zero emission electric vehicle charging stations at Crawford. One was obtained uh, through okay. a grant from the Department of Environmental Conservation. One came to us by way of our renovation contract at Crawford Park and as a result, they have uh, one has a long term maintenance uh, contract and one does not. Uh, what this does is it brings the two machines um, who are which are from the same manufacturer into alignment. So it is a, a, a very reasonable long term contract lasting until October of 2024 and um, puts them both on the same maintenance plan. Okay. Have we been getting a lot of use um, of we've those charging getting, stations? Have people been, been using them? Sort of a steady trickle is to pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're charging for the use, correct? No, we are not. No. We're not. So, so we're not getting reimbursed for the energy being used or? The, uh, the council in 2019 made the policy decision not to charge for the use of the station, um, which is uh, something that we can uh, prepare an analysis and submit to you in December or in January for the, the council wishes to reconsider that policy. Well, I'd, I'd just like to see how much we're paying for the electricity. Just, I mean, obviously budgets have gotten a lot tighter and things have changed and uh, don't know what kind of difference that would make, if any, but I'd just be interested to see. One of, one of the one of the considerations when we did this was to encourage uh, the use of the charging stations to be, you know, as an environmentally um, uh, pro as an environmental project, so that we would have people come to the stations, use them, and we would encourage the use of, of electric vehicles. Um, I think that electric vehicles have become much more common. I'm not sure that that policy is necessarily um, the policy we should follow in the future. It's a decision for the council to make. And I think it'll be based on uh, how much money uh, it's costing the town and I guess, Debbie, you'll be able to have the usage, how much under normal circumstances we would have charged and see if there's a, you know, a big difference, whether, whether this is costing us a lot of money or not so much money. You know, who's using it? Are, are we having the same people use it over and over again? Or are we getting different people to use it? I'm sure that the, um, 
I'm, I'm hoping that the charging stations will be able to tell, to tell us. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be able charge. to tell. We will, okay. Yeah, I so think we'll, we'll, know that, we'll, we'll know that hopefully next month. And, and then we can make a decision. Oh, and just to put that into context, and I, I'm not sure what notification you guys have received, but I know that the New York Power Authority is looking at rate increases as well for the year 2021. So I believe there's a few public hearings that are scheduled to take place. I don't know if you guys got any notification for that. I didn't see one. Okay, I can I can scan what I have and email it over. I'm pretty sure that we've we've gotten the notification of the of the public hearings. I think they're also um, they're also looking to underwrite more electric charging stations. I've yes. gotten those as well. Yes. So no, I just something just we can to look put into. it all in context because, like I said, the world is changing. So um, especially mm -hmm. with different things going on, and you know, we're not going to have Indian points, so there may be less energy available and higher costs associated. So just wanted to. Make sure we had all that information at hand. We'll make sure to pr present uh, you some choices for yeah. December. Vic, you were trying to say something. Yeah, I, I can answer a little bit about the usage. Um, the neighbors overnight do park their vehicles and charge their vehicles overnight. We have a couple that do come through the woods and pick up their cars in the morning. Um, they do get used pretty consistently during the day, especially on the weekends, but the most usage is the neighbors using it overnight. All right. When we, when we got the uh, charging station went through the grant, uh, I thought it was understanding that we had a whole year's, we didn't get charged for it. And we got to keep it 100% and after the first year we had to pay percentage to the state. Or the state gave us, if the money went to the state and then they gave us some uh, money back. Tom, I remember something similar, but since I don't have the details at my fingertips, I want to do my homework and get back to you. I mean, I don't have a problem if it's town or I residents getting yeah. it free. It's people that are not from the town or I have a problem with getting it for free. So I don't know if there's a way that that can be uh, fixed. You know, right town residents by all means, but if they're not from right town, they should be paying. Having a gas guzzler, which is a terrible thing to admit, how do you know? You were talking about um, logging which cars were using it, and does does the unit track bins? Like, is well, it no, it'll be, their, it'll, it'll be their debit card because they have to pay with a credit card. Okay. So their debit card will tell them if they're living in Porchester, Rybrook, or Rhineck. But right now we don't have a debit card reader on it, correct? They just plug in or? Right. No, they have to have, a, they have to sign up for the app, mm -hmm. which will tell us who they are more or less. We should be able to tell their geographic location yeah. of okay. where they're using it. I it'd can't great, As Tom said, it'd be great to gate that somehow as much as the- I, I, I can't conceive, Pam, that somebody charging overnight is going to be coming from outside the town of Rye. On the other hand, somebody from White Plains or, you know, Harrison who wants to come to Crawford Park has an electric vehicle during the day. I, I can see them charging mm -hmm. their, their car at that point. Yeah, I mean, be, the outsiders are going to be naturally coming during the day. They'll probably come enjoy the park, whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So let's find out. Let's find out what it is. It's been. Uh, what is it, two years now, Debbie? That we've had that? Uh, well, we passed, we, we passed the regulation. Uh, we passed the policy not to uh, charge in 2019. Um, so it's only been, yeah, but the, the mansion's only been open in 2019. So that's, it's been one year. Yeah, so it's one year. So, it, you know, we, we whatever it is, we, we have a one year experience. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what the what the facts are, and then we'll yeah. take it. From there. We have a handy dandy dashboard. We do. <laughs> I have love a, reports. Uh, I have another concern, you know, not to be a Debbie Downer on this. Hey. <laughs> but but you're going to be. Is that what you're going to be? Imagine what I'm going to say now that I've just learned that people are parking their cars overnight. I was thinking that too. The park is closed overnight. 
-hmm. are we responsible for a theft or break-in or joy rot? No. This, this presents all kinds of possible, you know, we may need, I mean, do we want to You're on mute, Jeff. I can't really hear you. Sorry. Hello? Can you hear yep. me? Now you yep. Okay. Do we want to be, you know, sort of this permissive about uh, allowing people overnight to leave their cars? What happened? You know, you can only imagine what could happen with cars unattended overnight. That's really not the primary function of our park. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know something? I apologize because I wasn't even thinking of that in terms of the uh, park being closed. So we're going to have to address that issue. How? Maybe, how maybe long turn off. Maybe turn off the power at a certain time at night. I don't know if we can do that. But how? It's on a meter. We can talk to an electrician about it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, How that, long does it typically take to charge? Is it, are we talking about like a couple hours? Are we talking about? I don't know, Lindsay, we could find out. I think those are, they're not super fast chargers. They're standard chargers. Mm -hmm. so, um, I have an electric vehicle that I charge in my garage. And uh, it takes several hours, but mine, but um, mine has a very large battery, so yeah. it takes longer. Um, you know, the the superchargers are much much faster. So I would I would assume that this is probably the same kind of power that that I have in my garage, and would be um, you know a smaller. Certainly, it would if they parked overnight, they would get a full charge, no matter. How big yeah. it was and how and how depleted the battery was, so we'll see. It'll be interesting uh, to look at the log and to see how many people are charging, how long the chargers are operating, whether people are charging for an hour or charging for five hours. Um, you know, the thing is, you can leave the charger in even even when the the car is charged. If it's overnight, they're not coming back when it, when it's finished. They, they could be finished at 2 a.m. They're not coming back at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see. It'll be an interesting exercise. It's been less than a year, and we'll see what we have. And, make, and the council will make a decision as to how to go forward. As much as providing the chargers free of charge, haha, aligns with sustainability mission, I do think we need to look at it from a financial standpoint. Lindsay's right, you know, entering into an interesting time period for the next fiscal. Yeah. Well, Pam, as with anything else, you know, sometimes sustainability costs money. So yep. the capital will have to make a decision to favor sustainability or to favor income. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, uh, it's a choice I guess we make every day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, okay. Uh, did we, um, did we, did we vote on this yet? Hope, or we just discussed? We just discussed. Yeah. Did we, we have, have a motion and a second? Did we, did we have a motion and a second? I don't think we can vote yet. Oh, we have want more information. Motion. Pardon me? Can we vote if we want more information? <laughs> Sorry. Well, this is uh, th this is a contract, a long-term maintenance contract um, that is uh, particularly attractive because they were hoping that we could complete it in the month of November and pay the bill. So regardless of whether we're gonna charge for the usage of uh, the, the units, uh, we do wanna maintain them. All right. And how does it amortize versus, I guess, what we paid or going forward, you say it's very reasonable? It's the, the whole thing is, is just a hair over $5,000 and it takes us through 2024, October 2024. But we can also change the plan in terms of charging the public if we want to with, with no problem. We can always go back and adjust it. Um, as long as we have the, the contract in place. 
All right, so we're not locking ourselves into specific no, no, until 2024. No, no Pam, we need we need to do the contract. It's mm -hmm. irrelevant whether we charge the public or not. That's right. a decision that we'll make hopefully next month. Mm -hmm. as we're Just making do sure this. that there's flexibility in the contract that we can adjust if need be. There is. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. May so I have we a need to take a vote. Hi. May I have a motion and a second? I make the motion. Oh, I'll second. <laughs> uh, please call the I'm order. trying. <laughs> Next oh, person. person. <laughs> Councilperson yeah. Joe Axelrod. Yes. Councilperson Lindsay Jackson. Yeah. Councilperson Pamela Jaffe. Yes. Councilperson Thomas Nardi. Yes. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next item is, it's not really a discussion. Um, we're putting, just advising the public and the council that um, we have uh, foreclosed real property that uh, the town will be selling on December 3rd. The public notice, a copy of the public notice, um, which will be in the newspapers this week is uh, appended to the agenda. Uh, there are a total of nine properties, seven in Portchester and two in Rybrook. And um, Dan Tartaglia is our special counsel who is handling the auction. They will be by sealed bids, uh, similar to the one we did a year or so ago when we sold the Highland property. And we're hoping that we can even approach the success that we had with that property. Um, so that is a, just for the notice of the public and the, and the council. Any, any council members wish to comment on that? Those, no? I'm sorry, those figures won't be built into this year's budget, right? No, well, that will be revenue that we capture for 2020 21. and it has nothing okay. to do with the budget for 2021. Okay. The way the budget works on this, um, Lindsay, is we have an amount in the budget for 2020 that if re my recollection is $350,000, Davey, is that correct? Yes. Um, so that if we, if this auction brings us $350,000, then we've met our budgetary figure. It's less then it's less and if it's more then then we have more money in the bank so mm -hmm. and then the budget next year will i think it reflects the same amount correct dave yeah yeah, we yeah. Have and we're already starting the process of foreclosure for uh the next group which hopefully will be sold um we have about 20 properties and we still have several um pending from the last uh, group that are not being sold because we don't yet have title or final judgment. So I for I for see another sale in the early part of uh, 2021 and still another in the latter part of 2021. So, and as as I always say to Nick, right, Nick. I say, Nick, you're going to send yes, out some more notices? Yes, some more reminders to let everybody know <laughs> that the town is getting really serious about getting their taxes paid. And if you don't pay them up, the town is ready to take your property. Oh. It's as simple as that. And just by the way, um, I know that sounds harsh from the tax receiver, that's his job is to collect taxes. Um, but this is really not, I know that's hard times for a lot of people, but when we talk about these foreclosures, it's got nothing to do with the COVID crisis right now. These are taxes that are mostly at least three and sometimes four years in arrears. These are not basically tax foreclosures that are occurring because people are on hard times uh, because of the COVID crisis and they can't pay their taxes. It's got nothing. No, many of them are very, very long overdue 
and <clears throat> the tax, the interest on them does make it very, very expensive, and that's where they get to the end that they cannot do anything about it. They can't clean up, so that's when we have to move in, unfortunately. Not that we like it, that we want to. We, For a financial basis, we have to. Yeah. So... We and the taxes we collect are on behalf of the schools, so comparatively very low. The schools, the county, and the villages, and we yes, have to make correct. them. Home. So when, when the school mm -hmm. district issues its its tax warrant, we have to come up with the money to pay it, and we collect it on behalf of the schools and the villages. So um, yeah, this year this year the collections have gone up seven million dollars. So we now have to collect two hundred and seven million for this year to make everybody's budgets whole, which is a lot of money. And and you're just the guy, Nick. You're the guy to do it. <laughs> I do I do my best. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um all right, so uh, we are now up uh, to our reports. The assessor, do you have anything for us, Denise? No, good evening, everybody. I have nothing new to report um, unless anybody has any questions. No. Oh, Denise, I did want to ask you, and I, I failed no to mention. Questions. Lindsay, no questions. <laughs> Come on, Lindsay, bring it on. Bring it no, on. No, I did want to ask you, and this is regarding um, sort of the um, income and expense. Okay. I know we discussed it that we would be doing it voluntarily. We're still going to make best efforts to keep that proprietary information. Oh, we're going to make full effort yeah. to keep it proprietary as we have always been. So that has been one thing that we've been very successful at is keeping it confidential. So we, can, we plan on continuing to keep it confidential. Yes. Great. Great. Yeah. And, uh, and th those will lead us also, obviously, in, in our tax grievance procedures, uh, where they are required to file income and expense statements, the commercial properties are. And hopefully the form that you're going to uh, have on the internet will make it a lot easier for them to do that. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, Crawford, Camille, Vic, I see yep. some at the Ronald McDonald House. Yes, we received a request uh, for a booking for September of 2021 uh, from the Ronald McDonald House of the Greater Hudson Valley. It's their seventh annual family fun day, um, which they did want to have this year, but of course could not. Uh, they did have this event at Crawford in 2019. Vic, you were there, right? For that? You're on mute. You're on mute. It was there. Okay. <laughs> Can't hear. It was a very nice event, um, very organized, um, close to 600 people. Yeah. Which is why we're bringing it up this evening because we do need to get uh, the council's approval to have that many people on property at Crawford. Um, we, have, we have a summary of what the events are going to be during the day. So if anybody wants additional information, we do have it. Um, but I'm pretty confident that uh, it's going to be as nice as the one that they had in 2019. Are, are these patients and their families or? You know, uh, I don't really know, Vic, you I may know. know. It, it, it is patients and families. It is a fundraiser for a child. Um, they do it uh, consistently now for the same family for the last seven years. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, special needs children that do, uh, do come. That's great. I mean, that's why we built the playground, everything the way it was built. So I'd love to see that. And I'm I'm hoping by September 2021, yes. we don't have to worry about illness or, you know. Right. Now, Vic, they had around 600 people and everything ran really smooth, right? Yeah. Okay. They had no hitches. And and parking wasn't an issue? How did how they arrange the parking? We used the football field, Tom. Okay. All right. 
Uh, I think that, um, is there any objection to the Ronald McDonald House holding their event? Nope, not for me. Not at all. Great. Great. I will let them know tomorrow. Okay, terrific. They will be very happy. Do we need um, a, Jeff? Do we hold it, Jeff? Do we need a motion? Or do we need a resolution on that? Is or is that sufficient? We're not expending, yeah. any, money. We're not expending any money. They'll be staff. They'll be they'll be paying the nonprofit rate, so that'll cover the staff. Yeah, it's all right. And they are also they also bring about twenty staff members to to work the event as well. We do not okay. need a resolution on that. No. Okay, very good. Thank you. Right. You've you've once again proved your worth as our town attorney. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, and the, just very briefly. Um, through the end of uh, or through the middle of November last week, um, we have now had 282 events, uh, which is pretty amazing considering you know what the year has been like. Uh, we anticipate about 55 more, and that's driven mostly by uh, the fitness classes that we continue to have. Um, this really is the last week where we're going to have daily activity um, in terms of the soccer fields, the art classes. Um, the fitness classes will continue through the end of the year. There's three different um, instructors. Um, and that's pretty much what we're looking at for the balance of the year. And that's... I got a quick I can, question. Now, these fitness classes and all, they're, they're outside in the pavilion or are they indoors? Well, they have all been outside in the pavilion and in the front circle. Um, now we are get, we've gotten a request from one and possibly the second to come indoors. Um, now in the past, you know, pre-COVID they were using one of the activity rooms upstairs, but due to the fact that we need everyone to keep their social distance, we are letting them use the great hall. Okay. And um, so far that's worked out rather well. And, and you know, the beauty of it is they can leave both the front door open, the back door open, the side door open, and they still feel like they've got air circulating in there. Um, they do wear their masks unless they're on their their um, exercise mat. Mm -hmm. So it really has been working out rather well. We have one group that still says they're gonna stick it out in the pavilion. So now the, good for them. The other thing is uh, the bathrooms, uh, did um, they start winterizing the bathrooms or are they still open? No, they're done. They're done. Mm -hmm. so we have no facilities for anybody that's rent out We've in the pavilion. We've been letting the attendant walk them to the mansion to use okay. the facility. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Because yeah. that, that's important. They, they, you know. Okay. If we're yeah. hosting um, exercise classes in the mansion, do we need to make provision for additional deep cleans, or do you think it's it's fine under existing protocols? We we pretty much sanitize every day. So um, we, you know, we do have a cleaner come a couple of times a week, a regular cleaner, but, but um, Matthew, first thing every morning, he goes around to every area that was used and he sanitizes every day. But if you, if you have, um, if you have a, one class, like if you have a yoga class in the great room, mm -hmm. then they leave and if you're gonna have another one, you gotta sanitize in between, right? Yeah. Yes, and they do. Okay. Um, there is an attendant for each class. Okay. And during the class, their primary role is to make sure the bathroom is clean if they're being used. Okay. So yeah, we're we're pretty on I, I, <laughs> pretty I, I, intense I, on that. You know. Yep. We're just Very being good. safe and making sure that, that, that their rental fees cover it. That's all. <laughs> Symptom checks when any I mean what before anybody comes into the building. I know. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I know that you guys are keeping a log on uh, when people are using the bathrooms. You're keeping it to like three to a purse, uh, uh, three to a two or three to a bathroom, and you're keeping a log on when they were cleaning and stuff, which is really the right way of doing it. Yeah, we do yeah. consistently. Yeah. 
I commend you. That that's that that's a good way of keeping track. And then this way, you also know the people that are the attendees are doing their job. Yeah, yeah. Right. And also, I neglected to mention that we do have uh, CJEG, the Sunday school, in now every week. They've, this is their second week, um, and all protocol is being followed. Um, I'm happy to report, and everyone has their temperature taken before they come in the building. And uh, so far, so good. I, I do have one question, particularly surrounding the pavilion and kind of the winterizing of the um, bathroom facilities. Is there any discussion given um, the fact that COVID will be with us or is expected to be with us throughout the winter of using heaters for the pavilion area and having allowing outdoor activities there to continue or is that? Well, we are researching heaters for the outdoors, but indoor, in, inside there is no heat. So you have to turn the water off because the pipes will freeze. If I, so unless we get, you know, we, we talked about tracers for the piping and everything else, but the pavilion itself has no heat. Well, the other problem you'll have is that your bat, all your water feeds are overhead and then drop down and you've got those big air vents up in that attic way. And those yeah. pipes aren't insulated because they weren't meant to be year round. Yeah. So that means you have to insulate the piping and then you have to somehow close off the ventilation for that attic space because otherwise it's going to get too cold up there. Even with the, even if you put insulation on it, you still have the potential of freezing. Yeah. So it's a little bit more involved than just throwing yep. a, a heater in. Um, yeah, yep. Okay. No, just out of curiosity. No, I'm just like you know. I'm just I'm just yeah. letting you know. No, I, that area I know of. <laughs> you sound like a plumber, Tommy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, Vic and I, Vic and I had a uh, conversation today. We're making plans to uh, put up holiday lights and uh, the nor menorah back up, so that uh, when families want to get out during the holidays, they can take a nice, healthy walk or a drive through the park and and get some. Do we, do we end up buying our own menorah? Yes. Yes, good. The big one, right? I know we talked yeah. about it. Yep. I yep. just never knew if we did or not. Good. I'm glad we did. Okay. Good. I remember okay. having issues lighting oh. last year, and then Vic magically fixed it. <laughs> like on the second Matthew. day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> second day miracle. <laughs> yes. One other thing. Um, we had the community cleanup, um, which went real well in, in all locations. Thank everybody who uh, participated with that, with the sustainability committee, uh, Pam and Melissa taking charge. Uh, Debbie too, do not discount Debbie. Well, you know, I was gonna wait to the end to thank Pam <laughs> for this effort, for heading the effort as chair of the sustainability committee so i'll weigh in on that one too thank you pam thank you gary thank you debbie and thank you debbie for finding melissa and bringing her into the picture i think she's a huge asset the best and made for sure definitely made a difference and we had a survey um debbie may want to speak to it briefly but people were really engaged they'd like to see this happen twice a year they love being out in the community cleaning and learning about their parks and being with their neighbors in a safe fashion, so. That's great. And let me, let, me, let me just put this, I was gonna wait till the end uh, when I congratulated you, but. Um, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> More work coming. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that um, I spoke to Pam and Debbie and Laura, uh, the president of the Friends of Crawford Park and the next project, and Vic, the next project that we're going to embark on is um, we want to establish a master plan for the park. Um, similarly to the way we crafted what the mansion would look like, what would be needed, et cetera. We want to do this for the park grounds and bring the community in to find out what we should do with the park and, and how it should look going forward. 
um, in terms of both passive use and the planting of gardens, the pollinator project, uh, where trees should go, how trees should go, naming trees and bushes and things like that on the one hand, and balancing that with possible recreation needs or ball fields. Um, we're planning on putting a bocce court in. The question is whether, whether the uh, residents of the town want more active use or would like it to remain basically a passive park. And we want to bring in all of the, all of the uh, people who have a community of interest in the park to help develop a vision for it and then plan on it going forward, you know, with a five-year plan or so and, um, and bring all the resources we can bear to it. Right now, we have several things planned. We've, uh, we're getting, we got a grant uh, that Shelley Mayer got for us uh, and to, to improve the, the soccer field, football field, uh, baseball field area. And another grant that Steve Otis got for us to, um, to put, I don't even want to use the word renovate, to basically put a new Repath. track. Part, Repath. Re, re, Repath. 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 Repath <laughs> the track, yes. And, um, you know, and the friends of, of Crawford Park are contributing a substantial sum to that. You know, and, and there's things like one of the things that we've been talking about but haven't executed on is when the, when the trail is done, there are a lot of places that use exercise equipment along the trail, uh, exercise stations, um, maybe grants available for that, you know, for um, universal exercise stations so that people who are uh, both abled and disabled can, can use them. So all, all kinds of things we're looking at. And, and I'm sure that the public has a lot of ideas. And those of you who are um, watching this, either on a rebroadcast or streaming, uh, can come up with ideas and send, send it to us. And uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to listen. So anyway, that's what I have to say about that. That will be a good project for the turn of the year to start. Right. Um, Crawford Financial, Davey, I'm looking at your report. Do you have anything to add? Um, no, just, just, just in high level, uh, we've made whole as of October 31st, we made whole throughout the year, but our outstanding receivables is 2.9 million, which is, is our lowest in, in many, many years. Um, but we've made whole on all of that. So, uh, any collections comes comes back into the town. We've made the school districts, the county, and the villages whole on on that 2.9 million. And um, on Schedule A and Schedule B of the in rent schedule, those Schedule A and B are the nine properties that will be up for auction uh, on December 3rd. So if you want the detail of the nine properties, they're on Schedule A and Schedule B. Right, and, and we're moving forward with the additional schedules. Uh, let me just go to that one in REM section. Uh, we have a whole list of properties. I mentioned <laughs> it earlier um, that uh, in, in, we have uh, several on Schedule B, Schedule C uh, that Jeff, could speak to it, but he's just about to uh, put the petitions together. He's just waiting for the final title reports to come in to put the petitions together and list them in REM with a, uh, a redeem date, probably sometime in February, I'm guessing, Jeff, would you say that's about right? Yeah. Possibly March, um, at which point uh, the, the town will take title and sell those who have not yet paid. Um, so going back to what Davey said, I was looking at the, at, the, um, at the summary and last year 
at the end of October, we had $3.4 million outstanding. And this year we have $2.6 million outstanding, almost a difference of almost a million dollars. So um, kudos to all. I hate to sound like a tax collector, but that's Nick's job, right, Nick? Um, yes, that's my job. Mm-hmm. Right. Too. That's why you see that extra money. Right. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> too bad we can't party with it. But it goes into it goes goes into the uh, into the general fund for the purposes of the town. So thank Correct. you, thank you Dave. Um, okay. Do you have anything to add, uh, Nick, or are we done with you? Just wish to tell everybody whose property is in Port Chester to be on the lookout because next month is your second installment of your village taxes, and the notices will be out early next week. I know I like to wait till after Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving is very late this year. So the notice will be there if you don't just call the office and we're happy to send it to you. And also, while I have the opportunity, I take this to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. Even though it's downplayed, it can still be enjoyable. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Nick. Um, Jeff, do you have anything to add? No. Town attorney report? Nothing. Nothing. And Hope? Town clerk's report has been submitted. Do you have anything? You yes, like? and I'd like to mention <laughs> that um, the month of October far exceeded every month for uh, revenue and transactions. Uh, last month was pretty busy, but October was v- extremely busy. And I just want to uh, compliment my two ladies in my office. They were they worked really hard. Yes, as they always do. Nonstop. <laughs> Thank you, Navy, Excellent. you're here, so thank you personally. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, before we adjourn, do we have any comments from the council people? Yes, I'd like, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And I'd also like to address my condolences out to Bishop Nowaknik's family for him passing over the weekend. You know, I've known Bishop for a, a very long time from when Mark, when his son Mark joined the Scouts when he was 13 years old. So I just want to wish his family my, uh, our condolences. Thank you, Tommy. Um, any other council people? Well, I would like to share. Yeah. In- oh, oh, Lindsay, okay. Pam, you were moving your mouth and Lindsay's voice came over. <laughs> <laughs> we do that sometimes, the trick. <laughs> I would I would like to, um, but on a more serious note, definitely acknowledge um, or second um, the condolences sent by Tom. I know Bishop um, as well, and he was a great um, public <laughs> servant and very dedicated to the town. Um, and, um, you know, we'll miss him. I also wanted to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and acknowledge Pam's great work um, through trials and tribulation for the cleanup day um, and uh, One scary night okay. <laughs> dealing with in fact I was going to participate myself and when I found out you know what was going on in the community as far as COVID I have elderly family members um, so I couldn't really participate but definitely um, I'm grateful for you and for everyone who participated um, and I just want to wish everyone in the town you know stay healthy, stay safe. I know we're going through a difficult time once again, and um, things are starting to pick up as far as the coronavirus, especially in Port Chester. And, um, you know, we're here to help and um, work together to keep everyone safe and healthy, so. Thank you. Appreciate that, Lindsay. Pam, anything from you? She literally always takes the words out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> I, do to, <laughs> I do want to acknowledge, um, you know, I do live in Rybrook. I know how much Mayor Rosenberg is putting into making sure village residents remain safe. And, you know, as kids are coming home from college, we observe proper protocols working with the school district. And I know that's happening in Rynek and, you know, and in 
Porchester as well. So as we're entering into this family season, just everyone, please be safe. Have a wonderful holiday. But, you know, I do also want to say there's someone very special in the room who had a birthday two days ago. And I just want to give some love to Hope. So. Oh, oh thank you. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy thank birthday, you. Hope. Yeah. Happy birthday. 25. <laughs> Forever young. Yes. Happy birthday, Hope. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, Hopi. I called Hopi on her birthday. Yeah, so she, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, That's what makes it so nice. Just all those good wishes. <laughs> very loved and appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> I have just a couple of things again. Thank you, um, Pam for a great job on the sustainability. Uh, again, my condolences go out to the uh, Nowatna family as well as the entire councils. Uh, he spent, uh, I guess, eight years as uh, uh, Joe Carvin's confidential secretary and worked very hard. Um, and I know he did a lot of um, other things for the, uh, for the town and especially the village of Porchester. Um, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, and I believe before our next meeting, it will be Hanukkah already. So uh, we can wish people a first day of Hanukkah to the fourth day of Hanukkah uh, that starts December 11th. We meet again on December the 15th. Um, and uh, it's very close to Christmas. So very, very happy that um, Vic and Debbie, thank you for attending to the holiday lights for, for both holidays. I think that's a wonderful thing that we're doing. And, um, you know, especially in this time of COVID, um, to echo what Pam said, people like to get out. A nice, crisp winter night walk in the park and seeing the lights of the holidays, I think will embolden the spirit of so many people. And I think that's, a, that's one thing that we can do. Uh, I also would like to mention something else. Um, there is an app that is available for everybody who has a smartphone. I would urge you all to get it if you don't have it already. It's called COVID Alert New York. You can download it from the App Store or, the, or, or on Google. And what it does is um, when somebody has been tested and is positive for COVID and comes near you, the phone, the phone will alert you. And it's a way that, the, that you can be contact traced. So um, if somebody has COVID, for example, and you have this app, the county or the state will contact you and tell you that you have been exposed to somebody with COVID. And it's a free app. It doesn't cost anything. It's on your phone. And um, it's something that I think if everybody has it, it will help to halt the spread of this, uh, this infectious disease. So I urge you all to get it. It's sponsored by the state of New York. Um, it's also available, not ours is COVID New York, but I believe it's available in any state. If you live in Connecticut or Massachusetts, you probably have a COVID Connecticut. Um, but this is a very valuable uh, application to have on your phone. Uh, for your own safety and the safety of your neighbors. So I would urge you all to get it. So with that, unless somebody has anything else. One more I'd thing like to be yes, inclusive. Happy Diwali to our friends in the community. Thank you. So we're gonna have to get a whole list, Pam. We are going <laughs> to have a list. Yeah. <laughs> Calendar. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to take an opportunity to, to thank Bishop Nowotnik and to express my, my sympathies uh, to his family and to celebrate his life. Bishop was my predecessor. He showed me what to do 
And uh, from the earliest point that I was active in our community, Bishop Nowotnik was there showing, showing us how to do it, how to be a public service servant. And uh, I think we, I owe him personally a, a debt of gratitude. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate it. I'm sure his family does too. Um, with that, may I have a motion to adjourn? Make the motion. <laughs> I'll second. Well, good. I was wondering if you're going to be here till Christmas. <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. None opposed. Thank you all so much. Thank you all for, for coming, for being here, and for being the people you are and working so hard for the town. Very much appreciated. Very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, you, Gary. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy birthday, Hope. Right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> bye bye, all. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks again.